Hey everybody, welcome back. Got another stove video here for you today, another DIY backcountry shepherd stove or hot tent stove. And this one's really easy. We're gonna take some five gallon metal pails. In this case, these are ones that uh, I managed to locate, but if you haven't got a supply of them, you can actually go out and buy these pails uh, online. I, I've sourced them out, uh, you know, ranging from 10 to $15 and a little bit of hardware and uh, you can put one of these stoves together really easily and really inexpensively. So this stove that I got here, uh, or, or this, this version that I did about a year ago, uh, has worked out really well. Uh, on the one I'm gonna show you here today, I'm gonna change it up a little bit, but essentially it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna take a five gallon bucket, cut out a hole for the door, and add some, some feet, little different style that I'm gonna do here today. And this particular one had a, a damper on it, which, uh, which worked okay, but the one I'm gonna do here today, I'm gonna eliminate this. We're gonna go with a pipe straight in the top and I'm gonna save a little bit of weight and a little bit of space. So, so that's essentially what, uh, what we're gonna to put together. I'll change the camera angle. We'll come right back and jump into it. Okay, so jumping right in, first thing we're gonna do is uh, cut out our hole for the door. And basically the only consideration here is to leave ourselves enough meat on this side or whichever whichever way you're looking at it leave enough meat on the side that we can mount some hinges here uh, i'm going to use a couple of small hinges that i picked up at home depot and other than that it's not really too critical how make how how large you make this so rather than trying to cut this out into a, a circular shape or add some some radius on it uh, I, I just picked a a size that uh, is going to be fairly easy to cut. I'm just going to use a, um, a cutoff wheel uh, on my grinder and, uh, and just make some straight cuts. So I haven't even really measured it. I just kind of uh, took a piece of cardstock and uh, we're just going to lay that over top and essentially use that as a template and, and measure this out. So once again with our cutoff wheel, it's going to make these uh, cuts fairly easy, fairly straight, so not really too critical. We'll just uh, we'll just mark it out. That's the nice thing about this stove. We're we're using everything that's already already here for us. Uh, what what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this centerpiece because it's got this. Uh, this plastic spout in it and I'm going to replace it with a, a piece of steel that I picked up at Home Depot. Once again I'm going to use some uh, galvanized furnace ducting but uh, we're essentially going to cut this out square or in a rectangle and then completely uh, replace it. So it doesn't matter that this hole is off center. If you could find buckets without this spout your life would be a lot easier but uh, unfortunately mine all have that so uh, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, so now that I got that marked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grinder, uh, or if you've got a, a jigsaw or some other means of cutting that, uh, you can use whatever you want. But I'm going to, I'm going to take my grinder with a cutoff wheel, and I'm going to, I'm going to cut that out. But what I'm going to do, rather than going right up to the edge, I'm going to come back about half an inch. Uh, inside that so when I cut that out and fit my door on the top uh, I'm gonna actually have some some overlap so uh, once again don't have to be too precise because uh, the door is gonna that we're gonna cut is gonna fit over top of this but let's just uh, go ahead and and give ourselves some some rough guidelines here and that's what we'll that's what we'll use for our opening uh, so once again when we get our door cut it's going to fit over top of the opening all right got my safety glasses on and uh, just going to go ahead and and cut that out of there
Okay, so we got our, our opening cut in there. Next thing I'm going to do is just take my file and uh, finish up these edges just a little bit so that they're not... Okay, so uh, I'm back here again. The camera battery died just as I was cleaning up my edges here, but I went ahead and, and finished those up so that we've kind of removed most of the burrs there so shouldn't cut us when we're using our stove. Uh, so that's that. Next thing we're going to do is uh, cut the door. And once again, I bought this galvanized furnace ducting, these end caps from Home Depot. So that's what I'm going to use to cut my, my door material, but any flat uh, steel material would work just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, template that we originally used to, to measure our opening. And you can see I've already got my, my mark there, but I'm going to set that inside my end cap and and mark it out and then I'm going to make my cut there. I'm also going to angle back these two corners just a little bit uh, to kind of match what we've got on the other side and then uh, and then I'm going to round up some of these edges a little bit. So I, I'm going to go ahead and, and make that cut and then we'll come back and show you how we're going to finish that. Okay so I got my my door cut basically to the size of my template and then I just uh, radius up these corners a little bit uh, so that once again it's going to fit flush inside the lip of my bucket. So we're going to try and get that to fit as tight as possible uh, so that our, our stove will, will damp down and we'll get the maximum amount of uh, efficiency out of our wood. So next step, now that we've got this done, is to, to mount our hinges. And the hinges that I bought in this case have uh, a little longer uh, lip or, or mounting service on this, this one side. Uh, and the reason that I chose to do that is so that once I uh, drill my holes here and, and mount it with my hardware, and I think in this case I'm just going to use pop rivets again, but you could use... Uh, screws that would be fine but using these two outer holes uh, that's going to keep the hardware away from this this inner edge here if I if I used a, a hinge that was square on both sides that have some interference and this door wouldn't fit flush once it was closed so by using this uh, hinge with the protruded side like that I can mount my hardware inside the hole where it's not going to interfere with the, the 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 door when it sits when it sits tight so so that's why i'm us using hinges like that i'm going to go ahead and drill my holes and then we'll uh, come back pop river that on there and then carry on with the legs Okay, got four rivets on there, mounted the two hinges. Everything seems to be fairly tight, the door is fitting flush. And, uh, and it opens and closes as it should. So what I'll probably do is go ahead and put a couple more rivets in there, but as you see, you really don't even, don't even 
need any more. So because I've radius that back a little bit, the door opens uh, past 90 degrees, which is what we want. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, put some legs on this. Nice thing about this uh, type of lid, if you bend these tabs back a little bit, you can actually snap that lid off and on fairly easily. And uh, which makes it kind of nice when you're when you're done using your stove, you can just dump the ash out and uh, and seal it back up again. And basically, it's clean and ready to go for the next time. So let's go ahead and put some some feet on this stove and and cut the hole for the pipe. Okay, my hardware once again is quarter inch. Uh, I'm gonna punch through a little bit of a smaller pilot hole. And then I'll finish it off with a quarter inch. Let's make sure we got that bit lined up. There we go. size of quarter inch perfect okay four holes so the plan is to run those through from the inside and then and then nut that on the outside. So I'm going to grab some nuts, put those four bolts in there, uh, get them all buttoned up and then we'll come back and see how it worked out. So the last thing we're going to do here is just cut a, well first mark and then cut a hole for our uh, stove pipe. In this case I'm going to use three inch. Uh, the last stove I used four inch. I think three inch is going to be just fine. Uh, so I've got that sitting uh, on or resting on our feet. Just try and get this centered. Mark out our three inches for our pipe and I'm actually using a piece of the pipe itself. What I like to do is, uh, this is a piece of pipe that I've used previously and this is quite a bit of soot in there but I like to stick uh, this serrated or corrugated end into the stove and that way the the pipe itself will rest on this little bit of a a lip that's that's on there I don't know if you can see that or not but there's a little bit of a a bulge there at the top of the um, uh, corrugated edge there <clears throat> and as long as we don't get our hole too big uh, when we cut that out uh, that pipe's going to sit in there uh, nicely and, and rest right on that little bit of a bulge so that way it doesn't fall into the stove and uh, we won't need to worry about supporting the pipe in any other way. So I got it marked out. I'm going to make sure that I don't cut larger. I'm going to cut a little bit on the small side of the hole. And uh, a couple of different ways we can do that. Probably going to be a little bit challenging with a, a tin snip. So I'm going to grab my my jigsaw, use the narrowest metal blade I can find and then cut that out where it's not quite square. I'm going to, uh, again, cut inside that line so that we make sure our pipe doesn't fall through once we've got our hole cut. So I'm going to get set up for that and then we'll come back and, and cut the hole. Okay, so we got our hole drilled and and uh, I think that's going to work pretty well. There's a little bit of flashing to clean up there, but we'll just do a test fit. 
Okay, there we go. That fits in there uh, nice and snug, and it's not gonna and it's not gonna fall through. So all we need to do now is finish up the foot uh, detail. I'll uh, I'll work on that, and then we'll uh, show you how it uh, all came together. Okay, so so there we go. Uh, that's what I ended up doing for for the legs. Got four six inch bolts, fender washers. Uh, these bolts are threaded all the way through, or all the way to the top, so I can get a nut on there. Uh, head is on the inside, bolt fed through. And uh, for feet, I just got fender washers, double nutted, uh, like I did on my last stove. That worked out quite well. Uh, the only thing is, maybe a little concerned about, you know, how uh, sturdy those are going to be, so... Uh, I gave you another option here for a little bit of strapping across there, drilled two holes, double nutted those as well. And that's just going to give a little stability if you're on snow, a little bit more of a, a surface to to sit onto. So so all in all, got the uh, door mounted fairly easily with a couple of hinges. Got our stove pipe in the back, three inches. That's nice and snug so it's not going to fall through there. All in all, I think it's uh, it's going to be a good little stove. All we need to do now is, is field test it and planning on doing that uh, in the next few days here. So. so thanks for watching. Once again, like, share and subscribe. Appreciate your comments. Until next time, take it easy.